It is Medical Monday and Dr. Kathy Slusher is here talking about an important issue for a lot of women, postmenopausal bleeding and when a woman should be alarmed. First of all, let's define postmenopausal. Okay. And that generally means when you haven't had periods over the course of a year. Because we know when we're in that perimenopause, periods can wax and wane. You can go a couple of months and you can have some bleeding and, and whatever. So when you're having that irregularity and you're, mm -hmm. it's been maybe four or five months and suddenly you have a period, that doesn't really qualify. That's more or less expected unless, okay. of course, it's excessive. So nothing but, for a year. Though. Right. But when you achieve that year and you have anything from spotting to bleeding, it is significant enough to make that phone call and say this is what's going on. It can be anything from bright red to a, a crimson, a maroon, or even a black. Mm -hmm. All of that, if it's coming from the vaginal area is considered postmenopausal bleeding. Okay. Now, generally, the spotting and um, the light bleeding can can wait to be worked up as far as seeing your physician when you can, you know, when it works in that next week or whatever. Uh, if you're having a bright red flow in which you're filling up a pad every hour to two hours over the course of several hours, mm -hmm. then that becomes alarming and needs immediate attention just to get it stopped. And generally, you want to stop it, preferably medically, until you can get a good work up underway because we want to know what's causing the bleeding. Right. Now it could simply be as much as an imbalance, a medication you're taking, uh, coming off a of hormone replacement therapy, uh, a okay. yeast infection, you know, it could be a lot of simple things. So you don't need to freak it's out not, and think, it's not oh my goodness. It's not time to panic. It's right. time to be Just evaluated. The, the worst thing, obviously, would be endometrial cancer. Mm -hmm. And so we want to rule that out or rule that in as the case may be and treat it. But Oftentimes, it's something simple. Endometrial polyps are probably the most common cause, as well as cervical polyps. And people mm -hmm. say, what are polyps? What are, you know, what's the deal? Right. Well, they're growths of tissue that would be normal, but they've kind of gone crazy and grown a little bit abnormal into that polypoid form. You get them in your nose, you get them in your colon, you get them on your skin. Well, you get them in your uterus, and you can get them in your cervix. Okay. And they can cause episodes of bleeding that are unwanted. Usually, these are benign, not to fear, but get them out because if you leave them in there unattended, they could turn into a cancer and a cancer is what you want to avoid. And of course, if you do have a cancer, you want to treat it promptly. So this is like what they talk about with a colonoscopy. They take out polyps Correct. oftentimes because they can Correct. become cancers. And okay. frequently we will find polyps when we go looking to find the cause. Simply remove them. They're benign. You know, we can add a thermoablation that we've talked about in the past mm -hmm. in order to prevent more from coming. They could come back if you're a polyp former, you know, you may form them again. Right. But the important thing is get them out, get them tested, and go about your business and feel good about it. But again, if it is a cancer, then we'll deal with it. The good thing about postmenopausal bleeding is it's a big tip-off signature for endometrial cancer. And endometrial cancer comes very slow and is usually very mature. So it's generally easily treated and can be cured. So again, even if you have the worst thing on our list of stuff we want to find, right. It's generally treatable and curable. And so, again, no need to panic, but every reason to tell your doctor and to get evaluated so that you know what's going on. So if you haven't had a period for a year and you see some bleeding that is persistent, first call your physician. Absolutely. Talk to them. If you're filling up a pad an hour for several hours, then maybe that's time to go to the ER. But other exactly. than that contact your doctor first, right? You got it. All right, quick yeah, study. Attention. If you have any questions for Dr. Slusher, you can call her office here. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Great information, Dr. Slusher. Stay with us. We'll be back with one last look at your forecast.